Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, my esteemed uh, co-panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Africa has made vast strides over the last decade in terms of technological innovation. Examples of this include Africa's estimated 310 million mobile users. Impressive when you consider that the mobile penetration in 2004 was less than 10 percent. With a population growth rate that has just surpassed 1 billion, Africa has been transformed into a competitive global force in the mobile space where the interests of its people are being met with mobile applications being developed by Africans for Africans. Undersea cables are also connecting Africa to the rest of the world with the potential to literally transform the lives of millions of Africans. Virtually, every port in Africa has some kind of undersea cable link which, when correctly deployed, will allow us to compete on equal footing with our counterparts in America and Europe due to similar speeds and feeds. In these particular instances, I don't believe that Africa should be viewed on the wrong side of the digital divide, but rather view as a digital addition. But despite this irrefutable progress, the bulk of the population remains largely untapped and untouched when it comes to the true impact of technology. The two primary issues in hampering Africa's ICT growth are the lack of connectivity and the lack of electricity. In terms of connectivity, Africa is a vast continent and bringing undersea cables to a port doesn't mean a thing unless the cables can be taken across the country and serve as a robust network. This is often referred to as the last mile of connectivity. But without this last mile, the majority of Africans will not be able to realize the benefits. Compounding the situation once you have passed the connectivity issue, the issue of building data centers remain. In most African countries, as soon as you leave big and medium-sized cities and move to our rural areas, electricity becomes increasingly scarce. And without electricity or reliable power source, technology and its benefits are largely null and void. No one could have predicted the rapid uptake of cellular technology in Africa, but it did happen. And mobile penetration continues at a rapid rate. The cynics claimed the digital divide would increase and the mobile revolution would bypass the African continent. This could not have been proven less true. In the same way, I believe there are viable solutions in place to address the issue of lack of electricity and connectivity. If one looks not just at mobile growth, but at mobile habits, the bulk of the African access to the internet via handsets, and this bypass the need for a conventional desktop or laptop and the associated power required. True, the user experience is diminished, but the technology and the services are still accessible, such as cell phone or internet banking. There are also moves towards solar power cell phone charger, and if these were to become universal, a major obstacle to cell phone usage and convenience would be eliminated. Moving to a far bigger picture and solving electricity access for millions across sub-Saharan desert, think of the impenetrable Sahara Desert that is measuring just over 9 million square kilometers with billions of tons of sand and the unrelenting sun that is beating down on the landmass every day. 
sun plus sand plus innovation normally give us solar panels and energy. Then how do we embrace connectivity moving forward? I am of the firm belief that Africa should start building its own data center. One could suggest that we put into place regional and robust data centers in Northern Africa, Central Africa, and so forth, so that the vast population could have access to information regionally. In this regard, we need to, ref to federate Africa and work together to leapfrog technologies. This would have serious cost-saving benefit to both the developers, the builders, and the data center users, and to the consumers that use the services. The challenges are clear when it comes to Africa's ICT infrastructure, as are the opportunities. The final point that comes to mind today is the clear associations we can draw between the challenges and opportunity we have in Africa in infrastructure and those we have in education. There is a grow, growing global consensus among education leaders, school leaders and educators that educational systems must evolve and traditional teaching practices must change to better prepare individuals to succeed in life and work today to prepare them to build, use, and maintain the infrastructure we have talked about. We are a partner in transforming education to deliver relevant, effective, and scalable technologies, services, and programs that focus the contributions of many on improving learning outcome for all, and that prepare our youth and professionals to take on Africa's ICT infrastructure challenges and opportunity. We believe that a quality education is a basic right and a socio-economic and workforce imperative. Technology can economically accelerate development impact at scale. Effective immersing learning experiences inspire improved outcomes Community of committed collaborative participants are essential to advance education and the upskilling of our youth and workforce. As a great African leader, Nelson Mandela said that education is a great engine of personal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor that the child of a farm worker can become the president of a great nation." End quote. Africa is lagging when it comes to ICT and ICT education, and it is therefore critical that we attract the attention of the decision makers, which is why I believe conferences of this nature are so important. At Microsoft, we have decided to make my legacy one of access of Africans to technology. And when we talk about access, we not talk only talk about the affordability of hardware and software, but we also talk about the connectivity, which is prohibitive on a continent, costing 50 to 100 times more than in the US. We are talking about being able to find an electrical socket in rural areas. We are talking about having teachers that are well-trained. We're talking about redesigning the content of our educational system so as to fit that delivery mechanism. We are talking about training the masses of Africans to be able to use that technology and realize the benefit from it. All of that is part of the equation of access to us about democratizing technology and making access available to everybody. I thank you for your time, and I look forward to the question and answer session we will have later on. Thank you very much.